Welcome to this short lecture on budget constraints. This is the first of several videos in our theory of consumer choice, so be sure to check out the playlist uh, that it's part of that I will link to in the box below. So here we're going to focus on understanding both the algebra behind the budget constraint and how to visualize it geometrically, how to plot the budget constraint. And our givens are going to be some certain amount of income, which we denote by I, and then we have to be given some prices for the two goods. We're always just going to focus on a consumer who can only afford uh, or only purchase two different goods because then we can plot it on this two-dimensional graph. If we had more than two goods, then we'd need a three-dimensional or more dimensional graph, and uh, I can't draw that, so we'd be out of luck. So we're given a price of good X and a price of good Y. We can say that those are X boxes and yogurt, and I don't really care what the units are. Uh, for, it could be pints and Xboxes, I guess. All right, so what we want to think about is if I, if I purchased some number of Xs, say X Xs and Y Ys, so X Xboxes and Y pints of yogurt, uh, how much money would I have spent? And on a little bit of reflection, uh, intuitively, you can kind of grasp that it's going to be the price of X PX times the number of X's I purchased, so that's how much I spent on X, plus the price of Y times the number of Y's I purchased, that's the amount I spent on Y. And my constraint is that this total amount I spend has to be less than or equal to my income. And since for this course we're going to assume that basically the world ends after you make these purchases or after you make them and, and get to use them a little bit, uh, so that you never get to spend whatever money is left over, you might as well just spend all the money. You know, right? You're dead tomorrow, so you might as well spend everything. That simplifies because then we don't have to think about, well, maybe I want to save some money or not. Uh, now we know we're going to spend all of the income. So this equation is essentially our budget constraint. Spending on X plus spending on Y should equal our income. Theoretically, it could be less than your income, but you want to spend all the income, so we get an equality. This is actually somewhat difficult to graph, so what we're going to do next is rearrange it so that we can put it on the axes that we have on the right. The axes on the right show us how much Y we purchased on the vertical and how much X we purchased on the horizontal. So points up here, for instance, would represent buying a lot of goods of each of, each of the two goods. We'd have a bunch of yogurt and a bunch of Xboxes. Points down here, close to the origin, basically you have very little of either. And then you could have a situation where you have a lot of Xboxes and very little yogurt, or vice versa. And what the budget constraint will do is divide this space into things you can afford, so stuff in the bottom left will be affordable, versus stuff up far to the right past the budget constraint that will be unaffordable. So unaffordable versus affordable. But in order to graph it, we need it to be in our standard uh, you know, format we expect for a line when we graph it, y equals mx plus b. Uh, so we'll get it into the form of, of slope-intercept, y equals uh, slope times x plus intercept. So let's go ahead and do some rearranging. We can subtract and subtract px times x from both sides. Uh, so that'll give us py y equals i minus px times x. Then we divide everything by PY. The P's Y's cancel on the, on the left, and we get Y equals I over PY minus PX over PY times X. So if I plot this, I can see my intercept is going to be I over PY, and it's going to have a slope of negative PX over PY. We'll come back to that point in a second and then it will have some x-intercept. If you do the algebra, which you can pause the video and verify this, you'll get that the x-intercept is going to be i over px. Honestly, you don't really need the equation to figure that out, because if you think of it in terms of just kind of your intuitive knowledge of being a, a consumer, you know that if you spent all of your money on x, didn't purchase any units of y, you would just be able to afford i divided by whatever that price is, units of x. So intuitively, you can get these two points and then connect the dots without really ever deriving this, uh, this equation. That said, the equation's useful because it tells us something nice about the slope. Specifically, we, we found that the slope, ignoring the negative, 
because uh, it's clearly negative. The slope, so I guess I'll just say absolute value of slope, is the ratio of the prices, which, you know, naturally enough, we call the price ratio. And this price ratio is going to be important. The slope of this budget constraint is going to be important. So you're going to hear a lot about price ratio in coming videos. I just want to, as one last point, uh, fo focus on the fact that it is PX over PY. A lot of you will be tempted to say, I'm, used, I'm so used to delta Y over delta X that I might as well do PY over PX. That's backwards. Um, so if you ever get confused on this and you forget, just calculate the slope directly. Either derive this line like we did with the equation, that should be very quick after you do it a few times, or find these two points, calculate the slope, and you'll see that it's, it's always going to be Px over Py.